Hello and welcome to the Thirsty Gamers channel. My name is Zach Crawford and today we're going to be looking at uh, Dead of Winter The Long Night from Plat Hat Games. It's two to five players. It's designed by Jonathan Gilmore and Isaac Vega and this can be a an expansion for the original Dead of Winter game or it could be a standalone game. Now I'm going to be doing my review. It's going to be based off people that want it as an expansion. Um, but I will give some thoughts at the end about it being a standalone game as well. Uh, so let me show you some components. Let me give you kind of a little bit of an overview and then I'll give my final thoughts at the end. All right, the first thing I'll be showing is the uh, cardboard location pieces. Um, they actually upgraded these. Uh, again, the same type of uh, locations, everything's the same on them, but they're really nice uh, thick cardboard instead of those um, card stock that's in the original game. So I thought that was a huge plus um, for uh, just, you know, for durability, for moving around and, um, you know, you know you're gonna, you know, shake your box and things and the corners won't be uh, as flimsy. Um, so they'll hold up better. All right, so you have different cardboard pieces in this game. Uh, the first one that you have is, you know, you have the regular um, barricades there. Well, now you have exploding barricades. Now you can't do this as an action, but you can, um, there might be card effects or something uh, or characters that are able to put these exploding barricades up, um, which will destroy pretty much everything there besides the uh, super zombies. The, uh, the next one you have is the, um, the despair tokens. These are um, basically card effects that will, will uh, have these. These are wounds, and what they do is they cannot be healed. Um, so you're definitely not going to want to pick these up. Uh, but again, just another thing in the game that's really, really going to affect you uh, if they ever show up in the game. The other piece is the uh, advancement tokens. Uh, these are for your uh, colonies improvements. Uh, again, some characters would be able to do this or card effects. Um, you're going to be able to put these tokens on those cards and then uh, are able to upgrade your colony. And I'll show you a little bit uh, how that plays later on. And with that, these are just uh, some more tokens of the, uh, the colony upgrades. They're just, you have cards that show them, um, but these are just tokens that you're able to put actually on the main player board, um, or excuse me, the main game board, just to show that you have those, uh, those colony upgrades. All right, getting into the characters here. Uh, Deathling game comes with new characters. Uh, the first one is Cole Winters, the pharmacist. Uh, once per round, you may place a non-event card from your hand into the waste pile without using its effect to remove all wounds and to spare tokens from a survivor that shares a location with Cole. Cole may use this ability on himself. So again, these characters, uh, it showed the spare tokens I showed you earlier, uh, character, some characters deal with those. Um, we have Imaham the student. This is uh, like the super dog in the first one. We have blue, the test subject 112. Um, but yeah, once per round when performing a search at Raxon, uh, you look and keep one additional card because obviously he's, he's a test subject from Raxon, which again, I'll explain Raxon uh, as one of the three modules that come into the, uh, the game. Uh, you have the sniper, Kevin Jackson, Nadia Rivers, the politician, uh, and again, just in another array of cards. Um, again, with all, with all different effects, uh, each character has an ability. It's exact same iconography on the cards. Nothing's really changed about the cards, but they do. Um, a lot of the characters do uh, kind of have characteristics that show like the despair tokens, the, uh, the advancement um, tokens for the colony, they'll have things that relate to those um, that's not in the base game of uh, Dead of Winter. All right, let's get into some uh, gameplay here. So the first module that comes in the game is the bandit hideout. Um, the bandits are actually really, really annoying in this game. So as you see here, for your um, cards that come out every single time, like, hey, I need some gas or you need food or medicine, um, your different uh, objectives uh, round around. Now they have this little tag up here now. So now a bandit will come out in each of these locations that are uh, corresponding to the numbers here. So um, we have the gas station which is six, but again, if that was a one or two, then a bandit would come out um, at the end of the round. So what they're doing is 
is now they're coming to each location and they're taking up space. You know how zombies come out with characters in the base game? Well, they're going to be coming out um, for your bandits too. So if there's one bandit here, then a zombie is going to get placed in there for each bandit in the, that location. Also, they are going to scavenge. So for the bandits, they're going to be taking cards and eventually, you know, the, every single time they're there, they're going to be taking cards and they are going to be um, in the bandit hideout. Now they're going to be flipped face up and as a character, you can even go there as an action and then you get to either search or attack. Now you are risking, um, you know, your character's life because uh, depending on your role, you can get wounds, uh, you can get, you know, you can actually get the ability to search for cards, but a lot of it is risking it um, and it, it really hurts when uh, you're, you're basically trying to uh, search for cards. But the good thing is, is that, you know, if you do see a card that you like, then, you know, the risk might be uh, better for the reward. Um, you can kill uh, bandits, but again, the big thing here is that they are going to be a nuisance to you. They are going to take cards from um, all the locations that they're at and you're gonna to have to go back to the bandit camp just to even try to find those cards. Um, and again, like I said, the only reward is you get to now see what they're taking. All right, the next module in uh, this game is the uh, basically improving your colony. Um, you are going to be needing those advancement tokens that I showed you earlier uh, to be able to put these out on your, uh, your player board, or excuse me, the game board and you're gonna be able to improve your colony, be able to do special things that you wouldn't be able to do in the base game. Uh, for instance, uh, the fireplace here, uh, we actually use this a lot uh, in the fir first couple games I played with this. Uh, basically, you're going to take that advancement token and you're going to apply it uh, to this card. Now again, some characters will allow you to place advancement tokens or there might be card effects that allow you to place advancement tokens. It is not a, just a regular action that you can do. But again, you would place it there, and this one only needs one advancement token, and then you're able to get this fireplace and use it. Uh, and again, for instance, this one says, when a survivor moves to the colony, remove all frostbite wounds from them. At the end of your turn, remove all frostbite wounds from survivors you control at the colony. So again, you can't do that in base game, so this just kind of just breaks the game a little bit and gives you some extra things that might be useful to you. Uh, there is also, if we can get this in focus, uh, there is a trench, a turret, I really, really like these, a greenhouse. Uh, all players with a survivor at the colony maybe use this ability once during their turn each round. Place uh, one food token in the supply. So again, all these really, really help you. TBD player, um, tool shed, outhouse, treatment area, and the tree stand. All right, we also have the graveyard hill up here. Uh, this is again, just a kind of a one-off thing here that you basically, Whenever a character dies, you're gonna throw it into the graveyard. Uh, there is going to be card effects that affect the graveyard. Um, and I'm, they're mostly gonna be just the um, crossroads cards. All right, the final uh, module to this game is the Raxon. It's probably the most intriguing um, of the bunch. The first thing, it's just like any location. You're gonna have a search deck that you able to, that character will be able to go to and you're able to search. Um, the other thing that the uh, thing the uh, Raxon has is the super zombies that are going to be coming out. Um, you have to uh, put dice on these cards, and this one, for instance, has a five and a two on it. Uh, you're going to have to put those exact numbers on the dice for you to be able to do a vote on whether they come out or not. Uh, if you do not, then they just come out at a random location. And again, they're a very big nuisance to you. You can't kill them with exploding barricades. Um, you're gonna have to usually roll a special, um, like a special number, like a, usually like a five or six, usually a high number. Um, if you don't, then again, it's gonna be really bad for you. Uh, that is really the only way to get rid of these, uh, these super zombies. And again, unless, you know, a crossroads card might allow you to do it. So some of these cards, um, they're, they're really cool, and some of these are pills. So for instance, this is a green pill, you're gonna roll a die, and then you're gonna be able to take the green pill card, 
and a lot of times it will say you know do the negative it will have the negative effect or the positive effect obviously the positive effect is better this is once per round you may add two foods uh, to the food supply and kill one zombie that shares a location with the survivor do not roll for exposure but the negative effect is at the end of uh, the turn place a wound token on the survivor uh, and then there's some middle ground too where it might just say add two food if you rolled like a three or four um, so I thought those were really, really neat. Um, and again, I'll show you some more of the, uh, the cards here. Uh, so you get a test subject, um, the drone. Once per round, you may reveal the top five cards of any item deck um, and select one card and add to your hand. Uh, fuel or fire, the blue, see them again, more, blue, more pills, the blue pill, C4. Once per round, you may change all barricade tokens at the survivor location to explosive trap tokens. Um, so again, really, really cool, interesting equipment here, a pulse cannon. Um, and again, it's all thematic to, you know, this science lab that they've been working on, super mutants, and, and have all this really, really cool equipment. All right, welcome back. Here are my final thoughts for the game. Uh, let's talk about the components first. One of the big things that I really, really enjoy is that they all the locations are the same, but instead of that flimsy cardstock, and I hate that flimsy cardstock in, in a lot of games, it, it, it almost feels like a prototype feel to it. Uh, it actually came with nice, thick cardboard for the location pieces. That's a really, really good thing uh, that they upgraded. Uh, as far as the other components, I mean, the artwork's the same. I love all the character art, um, all the little chits and, and cardboard pieces. Um, are really top-notch um, Everything in the game looks like the base game and I thought the base game as far as most of the components were great um, And again, like I said all the card art the, the character art is, is just exactly like with the original So you're not getting two. even though you can play these as two standalone games. You're not getting two separate um, looks to it so as far as the gameplay itself Let's talk about just some of the easy things that they kind of added in. I really enjoy where you can kind of vote for to keeping the first player on the, on the previous person for that round. Uh, I think that was a really good little small minor change to the game. The exploding barricades are a nice touch. Uh, you know, you can't just, just do them. Uh, they have to be kind of certain scenarios where you can kind of throw those out there. But I thought those were, were really uh, just a nice little add-on there. Um, the, let's see. Let's get to the modules. So the first one that I actually really, really did enjoy was upgrading your colony. Uh, you, those are really cool because I think in one of the scenarios we, we did the fireplace where we could go back to the colony and, um, and cure frostbite. We really, there was one time where everybody was rolling frostbite and we really had to use that. So I thought those were really cool. Um, and I'll probably put those in all my games um, because it just gives it another little thing um, thematically that we can, uh, we're able to help us along the way because this is a very hard game. Now let's get to the other two modules. The first one is the bandit camp and the bandits themselves. I'll never play with this again. The reason why is that the bandits, they don't really do much. I mean, you're not really fighting them. Uh, you are basically, they're basically taking up spots and just putting out more zombies. Um, thematically, I don't really, it's, it is what it is. It doesn't really make sense to, for this game. Um, I really thought they could do a little bit more with it. As far as the actual camp itself and going there, I could see in some scenarios where there's a scenario where you're having to find certain cards, you're having to search and find certain things throughout the, um, the, the, the outside locations because when the bandits take those cards, and that's another thing I don't like, they're stealing cards from you, they're putting them in the bandit camp but they're putting them face, down, face up and when you go there, you can actually look through them and you can get certain cards. It is very hard to get those cards but, um, and you're risking, and you're risking you know, getting wounded and stuff but you at least get to see certain cards and you're like, oh wow, there, there's, there's a couple of those food cards that we might have needed early on in the game um, or we need for that scenario, for that um, thing we're doing right now. So you, that is a good thing. But overall, it's just, it, there's a level of fun factor to hardness and it just makes the game a little bit more harder than what it needs to be. Um, if you are, if you're a person that just says, "Hey, I want a challenge. Oh, I want you know even a bigger challenge than this game already provides," 
then there might be something for you. But for me, it just, it's, it's not necessary. It's, it's not nothing that it does. It doesn't do anything for me that I'm like, wow, this is a really cool thing. Um, the, on the other thing, the, uh, Raxon, I like the pills. I like that you can kind of risk and, and try to get a good thing from it or a bad thing from it. Um, the super mutant zombies are really, really cool, but again, they come out and they're so hard to, to kill. I mean, you have to roll a five or a six. A lot of times we all just kind of said, you know what, we're going to try to get the mission done and we're not going to even go after them. Now that could make people think that you're a traitor, but if, I mean, pretty much everybody agreed every single time, don't even worry about the super zombies. Just, just let them come out. They'll just tie down spots, just like the bandits. Cause you have to, you have to go there and then you have to give up your dice to, um, they have the option of not releasing those uh, super zombies. Um, but you also can get some really cool cards. So I do like that part of you. And I think Raxon I will put in sometimes but other times, again, for those super zombie things, again, they're 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 really cool just to see what they can do. But you're, I mean, you're literally trying to when you try to kill them, you can't. Um, you're risking a lot. You're usually gonna die because um, again, you have to either roll a five or six, or usually a lot of times it's just a six to try to kill them. Um, so, <laughs> as far as this overall as an expansion. This to me, what a lot of it wasn't needed. Here's the things I really, really like, and I would have paid a, just a mini expansion, more crossroads cards, because this game is the crossroads cards. I really, really enjoyed um, getting more of those. There's even a little pack in there um, of the crossroad cards that are mature content. I really like that they separated those. I mean, for me, it's fine, but you know, just depend on who you um, who you're playing with, or if you're you know with a family that might not want it to to show that content uh, to their kids or, or whatnot. Uh, it's good that they separate them. And there's also a little symbol that's there. You can just take them out if you're playing with a certain crowd. Uh, so crossword cards are great. And then more characters. I enjoyed the monkey. I enjoyed, that was like the, the super dog in the first one. Uh, so I really enjoyed that. I want to make a little note here though, because I was going to talk about um, it being a standalone game. To me, if you are getting if you don't know what Dead of Winter is and you're like, I'm, I'm going to get the base game or I'm going to get this game, honestly, I would get this game because you're getting the upgraded cardboard for the locations. You're getting all the module stuff so you can throw in and out. And again, you don't even have to pay, or excuse me, you don't have to play with the modules. You can just play with the, the base game without the bandits, without the Raxon, without the upgraded to your colony. Um, and I think like the little, the first player a turn marker vote you know that should be always thrown in uh the exploding barricades that should always be thrown in you know and you can just play the base game of dead or winner and you have really great characters there's a ton of characters and there's a ton of crossroad cards in here so you can play just a standalone game and i would do that um before excuse me instead of getting the base game but as far as an expansion and this is where my review score comes in as far as just an expansion i Personally, I just wish it was just more crossword cards, more characters, um, you know, putting in a couple little of those rules with the, with the voting and the exploding um, barricades, and I would have been fine with that, and the price point would have dropped dramatically. Um, but it's for just this expansion itself, and fortunately, I disliked more than I liked of it. So I would give this uh, rating as a 5 out of 10. For this expansion i'm still going to keep it and i'm still going to play with certain things but i'll never play with the bandit camp i don't know as if i'll play with the raxon as much um, but i definitely will play with those upgraded colonies uh, the colony upgrades so as always stay thirsty for games my friends thank you